I forgot your password and I'm going to set a new password for you. So I'm helping you out literally. You don't have to thank me. I'm just doing my job as a friendly neighborhood hacker. So right in front of us, we're on a website. And this website is running on Drupal, as you can see from the bottom. So we are powered by Drupal. So this is a content management system that we can try to attack against. All right. So you can see right here, we have the home, we have another, for example, a possible blog post or a page, or whichever the case is. And of course, directly by looking onto the site, the very first thing that you may be keen to do is to start hammering away on the username and the password to look up for, say, SQL injection vulnerability. So you may begin doing that really quickly. But there's a problem with doing that really quickly. One is that you're going to start hitting a lot of errors and two, your IP address could be blocked and three, you go to jail. So as you can see here, what you could be doing is you could open a terminal and you could quickly fire up, say for example, burp suite in this case to be your interceptor. And you go ahead and start next, start burp. And what you want to do is to intercept a request. And what you do now, you have the proxy tab turned on. You go back over into login field. You go over a top right corner. You target from proxy proxy for burp suite. And you enter some information right here. And you go ahead and click login. So you have the interception here. And what you could possibly be doing is to send this over, say, intruder. And you have the target, the position. So you could be clearing all of the positions. And you begin targeting either the name or the password field. So in this case, say, for example, I was to add the marker for, say, name as well as a pass, I add them all in, I go to payloads and I could possibly load this with say SQL injection. All right, so here we have like your single code, double code and so on and so forth. So all these are different attack methods that you could be using as part of launching the attack against a target resource. So in this case, if you were to do that against the input field, that could possibly lead to your IP address getting blocked and so on. So that makes it a lot more difficult later on for you to run further attacks against the target site. So right in front of us, we are having a secure shell session over onto the target server. And in this case, what we can do here is to think about since it is open source, we can look at some of the source code and to really understand deeply what's going on that result in a specific vulnerability so that you can be more precise in your attack. So in this case, say for example, I locate under the database, sorry, so I enter locate, database.inc. I hit enter on that and we can see several options available for us here. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go over, say I vim into say var www, HTML under Drupal includes and then we have database. And of course, in this case, we have database.inc. Hit enter on that. And what we're looking out for here is, for example, in this case, expand arguments. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And we can see right here, we have several examples for us. So in this case, what we have here is we can target a specific function. And this function could be taking in and reconstructing queries back from the user input all the way back into the target server. And then from there, we can run a specific query resulting in a SQL injection. Arguments, I hit enter on that. And I go ahead and look out for the next one. And here we have the protected function, expand arguments. And in this case, you can see over here, we have the 4H array filters. Argument is an array, is key data. And then what we can see is that we are placing, all right, a lot of this information back to be reconstructed into a SQL query. So in that case, the key is going to be vulnerable. So instead of targeting straight onto the value, you can target onto the key so that we can then be able to run a SQL injection back onto the target function. So what is a typical response? So the first thing you can do is enter a username, a password. So I have no idea what exactly is the username or the password of any users within this CMS content management system. I click login. And of course, in this case, let me just do a refresh over here. Okay. So then once we're in, I can just enter any whatever password I want to click login. And we can see right here. Okay. It's the following. Sorry, unrecognized username or password. Have you forgotten your password? So that is a standard response coming back from the server. So what I can do now is to change the key over into an array. So I can enter, say, for example, the zero, all right, followed by semicolon, dash, dash, which is to comment out the information. And then after which I can do a, again, another closing off of the array. And I can go ahead and click send and see what we get right here. So if I enter sorry to see what exactly is being entered for us. So ooh, we don't see that anymore. Instead, it states the following error. All right, so we have Metasploitable 3. We have all this different information right here. So we can see that, okay, we may be hitting into something really interesting, okay? So now we no longer see sorry coming back as a response. The website encountered an unexpected error. Please try again later. And we have the error message, illegal string offset field, and so on and so forth. So we are seeing that we are having a possible success and we have discovered a SQL injection vulnerability on a target site.
And what we can do next is to craft out more specific SQL injection statements that we can use as part of launching the attack. So in this case, I'm going over to PHP My Admin, which help us look at the table structure within the database. So in this case, we have the following. So we have the Drupal database. And within the Drupal database that I've clicked onto, we can see all the available tables for us. And of course, in this case, we could be targeting certain fields, certain information. And I can click under Node Revision. And from Node Revision, I can see over here, all right, we have all these different other details right here. So we have your example of title, we have the timestamp, we have the status, the comment, and all of that. So what if I want to change the title? If I want to change the title, I will click onto the title here and I will say, for example, heck by Mr. Hacker Loy. Okay, I hit enter on that and it says one role affected. And if I see over here on the top, we can see the following. All right, so this is a SQL statement. So we have update Drupal node revision set title equal hack by Mr. Hacker Loy where node revision right, dot vid equal one meaning that we can use this as our example as part of crafting out the SQL injection statement against the target website. So what I can do is I can go over into the browser, do a right-click inspect element, and we can also use this as another example for helping us to be able to inject it directly into the target inputs. So here, what I can do is do a right-click, edit as HTML, and from the edit as HTML, what I can do now is to go ahead and target over, okay? So here, we have the name, and we have the name equal, all right? So what we want to do now is to change up the value over here. So in order to change up the value, I can change the name, all right? So in this case, I can put the name as, all right, following, all right, so I have zero semicolon and then what I can do next is to go ahead and enter the rest of my SQL statement so in this case I have the update all right note underscore revision and then we can set title equal hacked by me okay so here we have that a single quote and then I can enter where and ID equal one semicolon dash dash space and that's it Done. And what I need to do now is because it takes in two additional input fields. All right. So here, what I need to do is to change this up a little more. And what I can set up here is to have the name, all right, followed by the square bracket. And then once we have this already available, all you got to do right now is to use this and send it over into the target site. So here, just to check again, update, no revision, set title, hack by me. All right, where NID equal one semicolon dash dash. And of course, right at the bottom, we have an additional one here. Okay, so once we're ready for that, we can go ahead and target in over into the site. Okay, so once you're ready, just go ahead and enter ASD or whatever username. I have no idea what's the username and password. Once I'm ready, go ahead and click login. Okay, and you can see right here, okay, is this the following warning, MBSTR length, expects parameter one to be string and so on. And then we can see the following, okay? So if I was to go over and click under, I love high fives, okay? If I go back to home, and you can see the following update, which is hacked by me. And that means we have full control over the entire website, and we can throw in whatever secret statements that we want to and change up the entire site if we want to, including updating of the password. In order to update the password, what you have to do is to go over under users, clicked onto it, and you can see right here we have the following. All right, so in this case, we have two users. We have Metasploitable and Hacker Loy. So say, for example, I want to log into the site, but I have no idea what exactly is the password because you can see right here, the password field has been in a way protected. Okay, so what we can do is to update this value. Say, for example, if I was to click onto the value here, and what I can do is change it to ASD, ASD, whatever, right? And once I clicked on it, you can see one role affected. If I scroll all the way up, all right, you can see the following. So this is the SQL statement, which is update. Drupal users set pass as the password where users ID equal, all right? So this is a pretty simple way for us to throw in our SQL statement using the vulnerability that we've discovered. So in this case, what we need to do is to think about what kind of password hash function is it using? Because if you would enter this directly as the password, into order to log into the site, you're going to fail. So what we need to do is that if you go under Drupal scripts, you'll see following, all right, which is the password dash hash dot sh. So we'll be using this to help us generate a new password so that we can input it into the target website. So what you can do now is go back into the secure shell session that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quit. And what we can do here is to execute over to generate a password hash. So say, for example, over here, all I got to do is do a dot slash scripts followed by password hash dot sh. And I set the new password. So in this case, I'll set is hacker loy is very handsome. Hit enter on that. And here we have the new hash value. So all you got to do now is copy this hash value. OK, go back over into the browser and then go back to the site. And this is the place where I'll be using the SQL injection to update the password. So what you can do next is do a right click, inspect element. And once again, this is the place where we'll be injecting it. All right, so I did HTML and go ahead and create the payload and paste it over right here. 
So here we go. We have set the payload right here. So I've update user set password. All right, it's the hash value where users ID equal one. So once you're ready on that, let's go ahead and enter whatever username you want to. So in this case, I could enter ASD, ASD, whatever password I want to. Let's go ahead and click login. And this, if executed correctly, we should be in. All right, so let's go ahead and enter now the actual username. So we have updated the database. All right, so here we have the username as Matt Exploitable and the password as Hacker Loy is very handsome. Let's go ahead and click login on that. And that's it. We are in. We are right now. We have updated the table, the password field, and we log in right here. Hello, Matt Exploitable. Well, in fact, this is a deep dive and we can run this even easier. So if you go ahead and enter sudo MSF console, so we actually have the exploit available on that exploit and we did a manual exploitation on this specific vulnerability. So if you enter search Drupal and you can see right here, this is the one that we were using earlier. So this is exploit multi HTTP Drupal Drupal Gaiden. So this is using HTTP parameter key value SQL injection. So you can enter use number two, enter show options. All right. And you can, of course, in this case, set the target URI to slash Drupal slash. OK, and then what we need to do is to set the R host. So in this case, we can enter set R host 192.168.0.183. OK, and enter show options again. Make sure that you got all the configuration set up properly and go ahead and enter exploit. Hit enter on that. And you can see right here, start a reverse TCP handler. And what we are doing now is to target the site so that we can get the interpreter session. So this is the much easier way in order to launch an attack against a vulnerable site. But of course, we also did a deep dive on how to exploit it manually, looking at the key part of the SQL vulnerability. So you can see right here when interpreter session one open. So we are in, I can enter sysinfo and you can see right here. All right, we are in. We have Metasploitable tree, Linux, Metasploitable tree, Ubuntu. All right, so we are having full control of the entire site using interpreter. It's critical to not just be able to use Metasploit, but to do a manual target or injection against the site for all these different vulnerabilities so that you can learn much more deeply on how these vulnerabilities come about and how you could exploit them as part of your learning. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And remember, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you do not get hacked.